Today I'm taking a step out of my comfort zone a little bit and I'm not going to be talking about somebody else's car. I'm not going to be talking about a modified car. I'm going to be talking about this, which is my daily car. Mmm. <laughs> sure about doing a video on this for for multiple reasons but I also was looking back at when I went to buy one of these and how few of her opinions were on especially on YouTube and I just thought you know what if you're out there potentially looking to buy one of these things what's up my name's Adams this is probably the first video I've seen hit subscribe you probably hate the rest of my content but it's definitely worth hitting subscribe to help my ego a little bit I want to help people out that might be wanting to buy one of these I also thought I get to introduce everybody to my car properly. It's kind of just been floating around for the last few months and I haven't really said anything on it because I really want to focus on the builds, but here we are. <laughs> so let's have a look, shall we? So if you are one of my subscribers and have seen a few other of my videos before, you may know that I have an E92 M3 in mineral white. I bought that car three years ago and I swore blind after damaging a side skirt by hitting a tire on a road that I was never gonna buy three-stage pearl white BMW ever again. Same reason being how expensive it is and how hard it is for people to match the paint if you ever do have a knock or a bump or a scarf or anything like that and I've ended up with another one and there is a reason for that it just looks amazing <laughs> it just looks amazing the other reason why I've ended up with this is because I thought it was alpine white I didn't realize it was mineral white I thought it was flat white and I only realized it was the three-stage pearl when I picked it up but that's because I don't pay attention to anything Beautiful though, it looks amazing. <laughs> I'm glad I ended up with it. <laughs> so some quick facts on the car. So 2014, I picked up with 41,000 miles on it, which was ridiculously low miles. And I managed to buy it from a BMW dealer, which means I get the BMW warranty, but it also means I had to buy it from a BMW dealer, which is a horrendous experience if anybody has shared that. But 248 horsepower, 413 foot pounds of torque. This thing is no slug, which I thought it was going to be. Should we hop in it? Because it's freezing and I'm not wearing a coat because I thought it would look better in a hoodie doing this, but oh my god, it's freezing. I'm going to get in the car. The best thing about owning a car when you're about to do a video with it is you can be completely honest because you aren't worried that the manufacturer aren't going to invite you back to have another go. This car has some flaws. They're not massive, but they're really annoying. Now, I'm going to show you one of them right now. One thing I really hate about this car is this locking system. It may work and it may be very necessary if you live in Los Angeles or I don't know, wherever car theft is rife. I don't. I live in a little village in Essex where the most dangerous thing that's happened recently is someone crashed through someone's fence by accident. So I don't need my car to keep me completely locked in at all times and it's very annoying that there's no option just to turn it off. Um, the amount of times I try and get in the boot just from hopping out of the car to let the dog out, I, I forget. And also, because it's this keyless entry, which uh, this is my first car that I've ever had that is keyless start. And I think it's the most pointless thing ever. I, 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 it, has, it's, it has very, very minimal, brilliant use. If you've just got your keys in your pocket and you cannot be asked to get them out, brilliant. I'm the kind of person that doesn't like to drive with anything in my pockets. I find it uncomfortable, I find it a little bit distracting. I don't like it, so I then have to find a place to put these keys. If you just had a key slot, don't have somewhere to go. But they don't, it's very annoying. And also, having to unlock the car every single time you want to get out, get in, to let the dog out, to do anything like that, it's very, very annoying. Another very annoying thing about it is this. I can't demonstrate this perfectly, but what I can do is give you a little brief, brief annoying show. Okay, so, my car has the tow pack on it. By the grace of the Lord, if he existed, I'd be thanking him, because I, I use this for towing. So, it's got this cool little button here that you just simply press, the tow hook gets fully erect, 
and everyone's happy. Happy days. No blue pill needed on this wagon. But the other annoying thing is now it means that once the trailer is attached, this no longer operates via the key. You can't no longer do this. And also, I don't know if you're meant to be able to do this, but like, I have to hold the button down to close it, but you only have to press it to open it. I, I thought it just did it. Or you can just press it from the boot. I mean, this is super cool function. I love this. This is so good. But I don't understand why you have to hold the button instead of just pressing it on the key to make it go down. Like, uh, am I wrong? Is my car broken? Is it meant to do that? I don't know. But anyway, I find that annoying. I'm just going to be completely honest. I don't want you guys thinking out there as well that I'm an out and out hater of this vehicle. This is genuinely the best car I've ever owned as an all-rounder. It's not perfect. It's good. I should just say it's good. It's not perfect. Um, for one, for one, like I said, I hate that it's this, this non... I, I know it's what most new cars have, but I hate it. I still have... I still have to do something to start the car, so it's very annoying. But I just want to show you this as well. So if we click reverse, you get this reverse camera. Now this truly is brilliant. It has a tow bar option, okay, which I need to use more because I've crashed it a couple of times. But with the tow bar out, you can see like a direct bird's eye view of where you're lining the car up to. That gets a huge thumbs up from me. And also the reverse camera itself is, is where's it gone? There we go, it is actually really good. I, I really like that feature. Parking sensors, you can turn the, br the brightness up. Ob obstacle marking, I haven't even done that before, but I assume it's something cool. And I, and I find that feature really, really handy. There's also other things that I really, really like within this interior of the car. Number one, you've got climate control either side, dual climate control, so people can see you know, you know, if you've got a passenger, if, you're, if it wasn't in Corona, we'd probably have a passenger, and uh, they can have the temperature to whatever side they want. You've got dual heated seats on both the front as well in my one. I don't know if this is a general spec or not, but it is. Um, auto handbrake as well, which I rarely use. You've got the handbrake there. I drive, which is fantastic. And obviously parking sensor is easy to turn off just there as well. You've got, all, you've got so much spec on this car, but that's just BMW I drive. I'll let you go look into that more. I need to turn that lane discipline thing off. How do we do that? Okay, there we go. You've got three modes of driving with the vehicle and all of them have different dash display. So if we go to eco pro mode, just there, you see the dash goes blue and it shows you how much of the battery you're recharging and it goes blue and it looks very nice and you get the best MPG. If we go up, we go to comfort mode. That's where we normally have it. And then you also have sport mode. Now, I have said three mode, not four. Sport plus is just traction control off. So I don't really count that as its own one. Um, but I really love these red dials. And normally when I put it into sport mode, it's to get past somebody like trying to get onto a dual carriageway for someone that doesn't know how to drive or trying to overtake somebody um, who probably can't drive. So I've been doing this and I love that it goes red because it allows me to feel like a race driver for two minutes. But then we just put it back to comfort mode and we carry on as normal. Another major flaw that I've found with the vehicle is that BMW have no update yet for the sat-nav. So I'm still living on 2014 maps. I have to use my Waze app because I live around the southeast, so I use the A14 a lot, and we've had the whole A14 redone, but they don't have an update for that. But they do for my M3, which is a slightly older car, slightly different model, which it doesn't compute to me, but it is what it is. It's one of those things. Another very, very, very annoying thing that I found after, oh, this is why I wanted to do this video after I've owned it for a little while so stuff like this becomes apparent. You have your settings set up for the steering wheel, your um, on-screen like holographic thing, cool thing that this car has is like that on-screen dial. I don't even know what it's called. I've never had a car this flash before. So the on-screen display, you, you have to set it at the height you want and you set your wheel how you want it. But when you turn the car off, it all goes back like this. So when I turn it on, it all, that lights up on the dash over there. I'll show, I'll, I'll overlay that now. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up. And the steering wheel comes out and drops down. Now, occasionally, now I don't know whether this was just me not learning the buttons properly, it resets itself. So the steering wheel will be completely out of where I need it to be. And the thing on the dash doesn't sit in my eye line. So I have to dick around putting all that back together when I feel like it should just be as it is. Now I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's my fault or the car's fault, but I'm gonna blame the car because I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong. Overall though, sound system, brilliant. For a standard car, I didn't get the upgraded one because I couldn't afford it. Um, this was the car that was within my budget, so I didn't get the sunroof and I didn't get the Harman Kardon sound system. And I'm sure there's a few other bits that I didn't get, but I don't really care because I just wanted an M Sport with the fancy wheels on it with low miles. And that's all I really wanted, so I could tow my cars around. Anyway, should we go for a little drive and talk about how it drives now? Because for the most part, this is a really good car. Especially for the dog. I should have showed you that really as well. Let me pop the boot open now. So once again, if you've been on my channel before, you may know I've got a little Honda Civic EG and the boot opens like this. Super rad, my favorite thing about it. 
This does it too. So, so cool. And it's so, so handy. This is such a cool feature. Genuinely, such a really, really cool feature. And it also means the dog can jump in it and doesn't scratch up the bumper, which is awesome. He now just scratches up the plastic instead. <laughs> So let's talk about the driving of this thing because this is where it gets way more positive. <laughs> way, 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 way more positive for me. This car is amazing to drive. For myself, I've come from a tuna car background even when most of my daily drivers before this have been modified cars. My last one wasn't, my last one was a VW Touareg, but it was a very high mileage, very unreliable Volkswagen Touareg. It wasn't as wonderful as this BMW has been to me, albeit it served a great purpose. To drive this car though, it does feel just like that. It feels like I'm driving a car. It does not feel like I'm driving a massive, heavy 4x4 that can tow 3,000 kgs. This genuinely does feel like I'm just driving a 3 Series. It even go as far to say the steering is lighter on this vehicle than it is my BMW M3. So this is a, a genuinely lovely car to drive. The ride quality, considering it is a 4x4 BMW, is, is brilliant. It's super comfortable, super soft. Other valid points I feel like I should mention to a potential buyer is that you have loads and loads of vision. You can see so much, very little is blocked. The rear pillars are quite wide, but overall the back window you've got great visibility out of. The rear, the, the rear view mirrors on the side of the car as well are massive. I have replaced my inner mirror though, um, with a Broadway, and that's just because I'm used to Broadway mirrors, which are basically like convex, big, wide mirrors, so it means you can see everything going on in the car. I, I love how it drives, it's so comfortable. The steering wheel is such a soft, spongy leather fit, like, oh, it's such a soft, spongy leather. Very hard wearing as well. My steering wheel looks like it's brand new, which for a car that has got, well, I think, how many miles have I done in it? About, I, for a car that when I picked it up had 41,000 miles on, that still had 40,000 miles of wear. So I think that's pretty good. There's a couple of other annoying things though. One is the indicator. Sometimes it just doesn't do that three blip thing. You hit it and it goes blip blip and then it disappears. You do it again, it does it again. It's very, very, once again, just annoying. They're just annoying things on this BMW. It doesn't, it's nothing that's like drastic or gonna change my life. It's just frustrating. There's a couple of other concerns I have because I haven't had it that long. I've only had it, I don't know, five or six months. I haven't had to replace any tires yet and I haven't had to change any brakes yet, which are both gonna be, what I can imagine, very expensive replacements. So I don't think this car's gonna make me that happy when I come to changing those. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy it until that time does come because for now, I haven't got them issues. I have done a few long haul journeys in this and what a machine it is. It's relaxing, it's comfortable. The surround sound system in here is fantastic. Even though I don't have a um, the Harman Kardon system, the OEM sound system in here is brilliant. I love it, I genuinely do love this car. For all the grief I give it, for all the little bits of things that annoy me about it, I, it is still the best car I've ever owned. So I can't, I can't be too harsh on it. I do feel like it gets a little bit understeery in the wet. Uh, I've had a couple of hairy moments when I wasn't hooning it or anything. I mean, this is my daily. I don't, I don't drive this that much like an idiot. Definitely don't feel like it has a great turn in when it's wet. Um, in the dry though, it handles pretty good, and I don't really have any issues with it. If I'm completely honest. I've been banging on quite a lot about the stuff that's annoying me about this car, but I also want to talk about how it looks. I feel like a as an SUV, as a, as a, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a Chelsea wagon, this thing, but I think it looks so awesome. And you should see this and my M3 parked together. They just look like the pair made in heaven. I think I am gonna get the wheels done black at some point because of this finish on these, where they always go funny, it does my head in. I think I'm just gonna do them black. So the car will match the M3 until the M3 gets some wheels. This right here is one of my favorite angles of this car. I think it looks amazing. I love it, absolutely love it. As we come around the front here, I also feel like the front end is very aggressive, but not over the top. It still looks smart, has a huge road presence. I love the arches on it. I love the color. I love, I just love the car itself, but 
I feel like it needs a front lip of some sort. I think it looks a little bit like, like that. So I feel like if I, if I put a front lip on it, that will even all that out. And they do make some nice ones for these. They do carbon fiber ones, which I think I might grab at some point once the money's coming in a bit more. But there you can see probably why I fell in love with this car. I just think it looks absolutely amazing. And when I was looking, when I was actually in the market for one, I was only looking at BMW X5. I wouldn't consider anything else. So I, I'm genuinely very happy with my purchase. Very happy. So I guess that is me signing out as of now. I really hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and I hope you've liked my opinions on the car. To summarize, I think it's brilliant, but I just think BMW could have done it a little bit better with certain things. I'm willing to overlook other things, but like I think the finish on the wheels, terrible. They should never use that ever again. People were gonna have to refurb them, it's a fact. Uh, yeah, that's a story for another day with my, uh, my E92 though. Anyway, I'm gonna sign out guys. If you can just hit subscribe on the channel and tune in to the next one or watch one you haven't seen already. I'm sure you've got a lot of time at the minute during this lockdown stuff. I've got over 700 videos on YouTube, so there's probably a few you haven't seen. And uh, if you're new here, please hit subscribe. It'd mean a lot. I'm gonna bounce. I'm gonna go back home and get warmed up because it's been absolutely freezing. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again next time. If there's any other cars you'd like me to review, let me know down below. I'll try and get my hands on them for you. Uh, now we're linked up with Integrity Automotive. I've actually got some stock to go and use. So let's do it. And until the next one, guys, peace.